All right, let's start talking about angles in a plane. And just as kind of a heads up, a lot of this lesson is going to be a lot of terminology, vocabulary building, uh, just basic concept building, but it's, it's still really important because it's going to allow us to efficiently explore more complex concepts, knowing exactly what I'm referring to when I talk about things like radians and making sure that we know exactly what we mean when we say something like an angle measured in radians. All right, so let's go through some basic terminology. First off, let's draw an angle that's in standard position. So when I say standard position, I'm referring to the initial side, the initial side of the angle being on the positive x-axis, okay, the positive x-axis. And the vertex of an angle that's in standard position is going to be at the origin. So what does that look like? So a standard position angle would mean, and I may actually switch to a different color so we can see it clearly here. So the initial side, basically referring to a starting angle, or the starting side of the angle, is on the positive x-axis. This would be our initial side. And the terminal side, which can be anywhere, well, I'll just draw this right over here. This is what's known as our terminal side. So. An angle is an interesting concept. It is a way of measuring what we call angular space or the amount of opening, if you will, uh, between an initial side and a terminal side. And what's interesting about it is that it's not measuring volume per se, right? And what I mean by that is you could have an angle that looks like this, right? And I could draw another angle that looks like this, and all I'm doing is extending the lengths of these sides. And the angle measure is the same, despite there clearly being more space here than there is, let me just do this in a different color, than there is here, right? So it is not about the volume, but the uh, li literally the degree to which these two sides have parted or opened up. So that's what we're referring to when we're referring to angles. So an angle that's in standard position Initial side is on the positive x-axis, its terminal side is somewhere else, and its vertex is here at the origin. Now, for most of the angles we work with uh, in this course, we're going to have all of our angles in, this, in what we call the standard position. A coterminal angle is an angle that have the same terminal sides. So angles, um, let me just write this, angles have the same terminal sides. Okay, um, so implied in this is that these angles have both the same initial and the same uh, terminal side. So let me draw another angle. So suppose I had an angle that had this initial side, and it has the same terminal side here. Now, why are these angles co considered coterminal instead of being the same exact angle? Well, in this case, this angle could be opening clockwise, whereas in our, whereas in our first example, this angle would be opening counterclockwise. We say that angles that open counterclockwise are opening with a positive angle measure. Okay, that is to say it is positive. However, when our angles are opening counterclockwise, and I'll just call this angle here a different Greek letter, we'll call this one alpha. In this case, alpha is less than zero, which is another way of saying this angle is negative. So when we want to describe negative angles, they would be opening counterclockwise. Both these angles have the same initial and terminal sides. Therefore, we would say that they are coterminal. However, these are not the same angles, okay? One other thing that I want to mention is making sure that we reference the quadrants appropriately. Uh, we should already be familiar with the Cartesian plane, but these quadrants here, we would say that this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. We move in a same kind of counterclockwise motion, the same, mo uh, direction that we would open for our, our positive angle measures, okay? All right, now let's discuss what a radian is. The radian is the measure. It is a unit of measurement, uh, but we often say that it's the measure of the central angle, theta, that intercepts an arc equal in length 
to 1 radius. Okay, so let's break this down for, for a second here. Okay, so let me go ahead and set this up, set up this diagram here. Let's just do this in a different color. Let's go purple. All right, so we know that for this circle here, we can, we can say that this is our radius. Okay, this is our radius. And if I were to draw this radius again here, r here, okay, we see that this is the same radius, okay? And this is our central angle. It is the angle with a vertex at the origin. Now, this arc length that we have out here, this is our arc length. Think of it as like the pi crust, if you will, which will denote with a variable s. When our arc length is exactly equal to our radius, when our arc length is exactly equal to our radius, this angle, the central angle that has been intercepted here, we would say in this case, theta is exactly equal to one radian. That is to say, if I were to take this arc length here, what I have kind of drawn here in green, and pretend like I was using a piece of string to measure this arc length, and if I were to extend out that string and compare it to the radius, and I see that it's exactly the same as that radius, they have the same length. One is just kind of curved, if you will. But when that arc length is exactly the same length as that radius, that's when you know that this angle is exactly one radian. Okay? So what would two radians look like? Two radians, if I were to kind of take this same theta here and kind of stack it here, this would be two radians, two radians. And if I were to keep going, three radians would stop right around here. Well, why is it falling a little bit short of the x-axis? Some of you can probably see where this is going. It's because one half rotation of the circle is exactly pi radians, or approximately 3.14 radians, which is why if we go continue to move all the way around, one full rotation would be 2 pi radians. So. A radian is an angle measure unit, specifically where the intercepted arc length is exactly equal to one, uh, where your intercepted arc length is exactly equal to your radius. It's for this reason that, that it's based on the ratio of angles and arc lengths in a circle, that it's a more, it's often used as the more accurate angle measure. Because if you really think about it, Measuring a circle in something 360 degrees is really very much a construct of really just human history. Um, and it seems somewhat arbitrary as to why uh, we use 360 degrees. It makes a lot of sense if you actually go into math history, but I'm not going to spend time in this video discussing that. Um, but look it up. It's really just based on what previous civilizations have used for their bases and with their number systems. So for us, the radian is honestly the better way to go. However, we do use a lot of degrees, and it's going to be important moving forward to be able to convert back and forth between measuring an angle in radians and what we commonly are used to doing in measuring things in degrees. So let's discuss that. So what is the relationship between angle measures uh, in degrees versus in radians? There's a little bit of typo there. Uh, what is the relationship between uh, angle measures in degrees and radians? Well, we just established that one full rotation or one full, let's see, one full revolution is 2 pi radians. It is also in degrees 360 degrees. So, how would we go back and forth between 160 degrees and 2 pi radians? Well, I could easily actually, let me just remove the radians here, which is going to be implied that we're talking about radians. In fact, I'll maybe just write radians here. I could go ahead and divide both sides by 2. And what we see here is that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So for this reason, whenever we have an angle that is in um, degrees, this again is a typo, I apologize, this should say degrees to radians and radians to, not angle, but degrees, so if I want to go from degrees to radians, all I need to do is just multiply by pi over 180. Okay, let's do an example. So for example, suppose I had an angle that was 205 degrees, okay, and I want to convert into radians. So 205 degrees, 
I want the unit, the unit that I want, that's what I want in the numerator. So pi radians is going to be in the numerator, 180 degrees down in the denominator. Okay? So I could then just go ahead and simplify, divide the numerator by 5. So that's going to give me, what, 41 pi, divide the denominator by 5. That's going to be 36. So I have 41 pi over 36 radians. What if I wanted to go to the other way? What if, if I wanted to take an angle that was already in radians and go into degrees? Well, in this case, I would multiply by the reciprocal. 180 degrees over pi radians. Because again, the unit that I want to end up with is what I want in the numerator. So let's take this angle, 4 pi over 5 radians, and I want to convert that into degrees. So I'm going to go 180 degrees over pi. And I can simplify here. These pi's are going to divide out. We already know that 5 goes into 18 36 times. And then 36 times 4 is going to be 144 degrees. Okay? All right. So I'm going to pause the video right now and let you try practicing converting some of these angles into either degrees or radians, depending on what's given to you. So for these, if you've paused and are now wanting to check answers, 180 over pi, this would give you 840 degrees. This one, if I want to multiply by pi over 180, you would end up with 1.149 pi radians. 4 pi over 7, this is in radians. If you do not see a degree symbol, it is in radians. Similarly, if you don't write the degree symbol, then we are going to say that that is in uh, degrees. So this is 180 over pi. So this would be 720 pi over 7 radians. And again, I don't need to write radians. We're just going to assume that it's in radians if you don't see the degree symbol. And negative 5 pi over 3, if I multiply this by 180 over pi, this is equal to negative 300 degrees. Okay? All right. Now, whenever we want to sketch angles, let's talk about sketching angles. So we will talk way more about uh, the unit circle in just a bit, but just know that we can kind of start establishing some basic um, terminology with sketching angles. Uh, know that, again, if this is pi radians and this is 2 pi radians, it is also where a 0 radian angle would start, which means this here would be pi over 2, and this marker, the negative y-axis, would represent 3 pi over 2. And if we're talking about coterminal angles, we also know that if we're moving this way, 3 pi over 2 would be coterminal, coterminal with negative pi over 2. This could be negative pi over 2 as well. These angles are not the same. 270 degrees is not the same as negative 90 degrees, but they are coterminal. They have the same terminal side. Um, the last thing I just want to briefly discuss before we talk about the unit circle in, in different lessons in the future is the idea of acute angles. And this is where an angle theta is less than 90 degrees, but greater than 0 degrees. So it's an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. We would say that an obtuse angle is an angle that is between 180 and 90 degrees, not inclusive. So an example of an acute angle that I could just quickly sketch for you all, something like an acute angle is any angle with an initial side here on the positive x-axis, and something like this. This would be an acute angle. Its angle measure is between 0 and 90, or 0 and pi over 2. Well, what about an obtuse angle? In this case, let me mark this as alpha, something here with initial side, and something like this here. This would be an obtuse angle. Now, notice, as I'm drawing my angles, and I should have done it better on this first one, I am drawing an, this kind of arrow from the initial side up to the terminal side. And this is actually surprisingly pretty important because this tells you which way the angle is opening. You could have that same angle that we had earlier and draw a coterminal angle, this time drawing an angle going this way. I could call this one here, um, I don't know, alpha sub 2, something like that. And that would be an angle that is opening negative. So we need those angles there to indicate which direction it's turning. Okay? All right. So with that said, I'm going to pause the video and let you work through some of these practice problems here. These are some terms that hopefully you're already familiar with.
Now, coming back together, hopefully you've had a chance to work a few of these or work through a few of these. How can we calculate coterminal angles? Well, we know that if coterminal angles have the same terminal side, going back to our previous example here, we could simply subtract or add 360 degrees or 2 pi. So we can add or subtract, depending on whether or not we want a positive or negative coterminal angle, 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Okay? What do we know about complementary angles? Well, complementary angles are two positive angles whose sum is 90 degrees. And supplementary angles are two positive angles whose sum is 180 degrees. Okay? All right. Hopefully you had a chance to graph some of these angles. The way I would graph theta here, I'm going to draw my initial side on the positive x-axis. My terminal side would be down here on the negative y-axis. This would be theta is equal to 3 pi over 2. Okay? And everything that I've drawn there is pretty much necessary, maybe with the exception of what the angle is. Hopefully that's clear. But the way I have it drawn there is how you should be sketching your angles. What about 11 pi over 3? Well, we're going to have to count a little bit here. We know that when we go here, this is pi radians. So pi radians in terms of base uh, denominator 3, it would be 3 pi over 3. One full rotation would be 2 pi or 6 pi over 3. And then uh, since I'm going to loop around again, I'm going to go around this time. That would be 9 pi over 3. And 11 pi over 3, if we kind of get our fractional understanding down, would be down over here. So our terminal side would be here in quadrant 4. This would be 11 pi over 3. So notice the way that I've drawn it. I'm showing the direction in which it's opening. What about when theta is equal to negative pi over 4? Here's our initial side. If we know that, and I probably could draw that a little bit better. If we know that this is negative pi over 2, that means halfway there has to be, theta has to be negative pi over 4. That would be that angle. Okay. And finally, for the last one here, let's graph 2 pi over 5. Find a coterminal, a complementary, and a supplementary angle. Okay, so first off, let's graph 2 pi over 5. Well, 2 pi over 5 would be right around here. So initial side here, this would be 2 pi over 5. Let's find a coterminal angle. What is an angle that shares the same terminal side? Well, I could take 2 pi over 5, and I could add 2 pi to it. That is to say, this would be 2 pi over 5 plus 10 pi over 5, which is just 12 pi over 5. I could also find a negative coterminal angle by subtracting 2 pi from it. So minus 2 pi, or I guess we know by now, minus 10 pi over 5. That's negative 8 pi over 5. Okay. What about a complementary angle? Well, that's a case where we just subtract our angle from 90 degrees or pi over 2. So let's do pi over 2 minus 2 pi over 5, which we'll then write as 5 pi over 10 minus 4 pi over 10. So our complementary angle would be pi over 10. That's the angle we need to add here such that, so th such that we get 2 pi over 2. This would be pi over 10. How much more would I need to add to get to pi? Well, that's where... We need to find our supplementary angle. So our supplementary angle would be pi minus 2 pi over 5, or 5 pi over 5 minus 2 pi over 5, and that would just give us 3 pi over 5. There's our supplementary angle. Okay? And if your angle is already greater than 90 degrees, then you know you don't have a complementary angle. If your anger angle is already greater than 180 degrees, then there will be no supplementary angle can exist. All right, in the next lesson we'll do some applications of angle measure problems.